Well, I, I, I'll go if Anthony Crawler doesn't, <laughs> because he can wear some shite in. Well, you're very welcome to the Lightweight Boxing Show. We are in the city of Manchester. We are in a, a fairly unique place, Anthony, called yes. the Love Factory, where it's not often that you put boxing and love hand in hand, but it's this not. cavernous warehouse that is a new event place, apparently. I've never been here before, have you? I've never been. I didn't know too much about it, but I think we'll be we well, seeing plenty it more start, of it. Well, there we go, yeah. yeah. Things have changed around here, but uh, no. I think uh, we'll be seeing many parties here over the next few years, whether it be weigh-ins, Many events, and uh, yeah, it's a great little spot, isn't it? It is, just on the edge of the city centre, where, of course, we've been talking and looking at all things Ricky Hatton exhibition with Marco Antonio Barrera, of course, a serious fight card. So you are going to hear on this lightweight boxing show from all the main protagonists, Ricky, Natasha Jonas, and Marie-Eva Decaire. They've got a great unification fight. Also, Dalton Smith, brilliant fight as well. Brad Ray's in a great fight. These two emerging talents. It's a talents. great card. Real 50 50 domestics against Tyler Deli, in Brad's case, Denny, I should say, and, a, and then obviously Casey Benjamin in the case of Dalton, but plenty of other action. We're going to hear from Fraser Clark as well. We're going to hear from Joe Gallagher, of course, because he wouldn't <laughs> let us forget. So, the weekend yeah. in Abu Dhabi was an excellent card. It, yeah. was a, it was a great card. Now, there's plenty of domestic action over the air, the, over there, the Yafai's on the card and, and everything else. And, and then, Chantal Cameron, quite rightly, getting loads of plaudits. Zelfa Barrett just coming up a little bit short, which was a brilliant effort yeah. from him. And then we've got to talk about the masterclass that was yeah. Dimitri Bivol. So I'm throwing it all at you, Anne. Yes. All at you. Pick the bones out no, of all of that. So first of all, I think, oh, I think I'm still hurting now from the Zelfa Barrett fight. When I first barred Zelfa many years ago, I always believed he had the talent to become a world champion, and I still do. And I really fought on Saturday night, and that was going to be his night. And Every credit to Rakimov because the uppercut that he took and managed to get yeah. up and regroup, um, you've got to give you've shown the heart of a champion. Yeah. But Zelfa will come again, and I think that obviously the equilibrium went, the balance yeah. went. Listen, obviously, we've got to give Rakimov credit, he was coming back into the fight as well, pretty big. Zelfa's shown the level that he belongs at, and that's world mm. class. And um, I believe, I still believe he'll be a world champion, Manchester's world champion. Um, Let me just say, by the way, Zelfa was, was here He was here, he was well, in good spirits. I had a good chat with him as well. Now, he's here, did go. Yes. He wasn't making any excuses no, about it no. on the night, he's but he's here, did go. So his equilibrium yeah. was off, and we thought Absolutely. watching it And was it did look that wrong. way. Yeah. Some yeah. it went, suddenly yeah. didn't it? And um, you can only imagine the pain there. But listen, he went out on his shield, but it was, it was a fantastic fight. Yeah, it was, yeah. Fantastic fight, but his time will come. Um, Chantal Cameron, wow, she's on top of the world, literally yeah. now, isn't she? I thought mm. she... You know, she put in a great performance against McCaskill. Yeah. She just seemed more focused than ever, and I was hearing those rumours out of camp, just how good she was looking. I think her display has shown that. And I think now she's, well, she's got all the marvels in that division. What does she do now? I know she's called out Katie Taylor. She has done for a while. Yeah. That's a fight that's been so spoken about. Would she move up in weight? Could she move down? It's the huge fight. The world's a oyster, isn't it, really? Yeah. And then, obviously, last but certainly not least, I think the performance by Dimitri Bivol probably cemented him being the fighter of 2022. I'd be very hard to take it away from him, especially that on the Canelo performance. That's obviously going to be the one that stood out, but he looked good. He looked very good, good. against Gilberto it, Ramirez. It was just about perfect, it was a, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a masterclass. I mean, feet, For defense. someone who's so correct, moves so well defensively, you know, if you... Mm. Dimitri Bivol, I think if you're telling a young amateur boxer who's getting into the sport, or he's in the sport early on, someone to watch and learn from yeah. is certainly Dimitri Bivol. Yeah. And um, I just hope now he gets the plaudits that's deserved for one, but then he becomes a superstar that he deserves to be. The thing about watching him, you know when you lot of, watch a lot of fights and you might want to stop him, you might, or I want to see the, yeah. you know, the blood and guts and all. I think you'd watch 15 or 20 rounds of him because it's like you're it's, just enjoying no, everything it is, he does. It's, it's you don't want him to stop anyone. As they say, no, you just want to keep admiring yeah. the skill set, and it's it's amazing. And I think, you know, when you look when you look back at interviews and stuff after that, he's not the Canelo fight. The rematch would make the most sense financially, but he's like. No, no, well, I you know he's my best mate anyway because I interviewed you him the did, other week. You and did, and I know. he said anyway that it's a bit turbulent next, whatever happens. Yeah, I do know you and Dimitri yeah, are close. Very close, um, very close. Unbelievably close, but yep. that's, I mean, he's like, no, no, I want the turbulent yep. next. I'm not. So he's, he's a fighter who's very much 
you know, it's not about the money and the fame for him. He wants titles and he's a real fighter's fighter and what a performance. Yeah, and remember, he said he likes Callum Smith and he likes Joshua Boatsu. That is I'd be interested to see what they think now. After yes, watching that. yeah, of course. It's, I know it's a fight. Yeah. The past Callum fought as amateurs and I think yeah. Callum's a very straight lad and he thought he just nicked it. He went Bivol's way. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the case, but he, um, mm. he, he, he would be welcome to that again, I'm sure. But that's, uh, he's there, thereabouts, isn't it? So for any reason, the Viterbia fight didn't happen, but I think just recently I seen, just last night, Callum is in line to face, face the winner yeah. of Viterbia Yard. So exciting times in the light of the weight division. Just a word, I have spoken to uh, the Jamie Moore, Nigel Travis camp. I had a, a bit of a chat with Nigel Travis. Yeah. To say the flying is an understatement. You know, they're, they're yes. so made up about Chantel and that performance. Course, and what I'm it does for the so. gym. Of after, course, after the they blow had, that they yeah. had with Jack Catterall, obviously. And, you know, they had a key on earlier in the card, yeah. so shout out to yeah. a key. Um, he yeah, picked up another good win. Well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, that's a gym, which is um, absolutely flying at the minute. Yeah. And it, rolling into the new year, mm. they're going to be very happy with that. If you get to see uh, Jack Hatch and Josh Taylor, which I'm very sure we will hear about early next year. Soon. Yeah, early yeah. next year. I'm sure that's going to be the case. But of course, we, we are here about the boxer card on Sky this weekend. The main event is Natasha Jonas against Eve Marie de Kerr. And of course, that exhibition, Ricky Hatton, who's going in against Marco Antonio Barrera. So earlier in the week, we took the opportunity to go and have a chat with Ricky and also Brad Ray, who's on the card. <laughs> Well, Rick, it's fight week, and I know it's been a, a little while since you've been yeah, just, been uh, saying, just, uh, just talking the, about fight yeah, week. Yeah, just the eight month. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, yeah, it's uh, first time around. He's not obviously. done me no harm, trust me, no. Well, we can see that anyway. I mean, the, the shape you're in now. I mean, uh, again, talk us through preparations for this because you were you were flying obviously ahead of the original date. What did it do to you then to, to have to switch off and get back on it again? I was heartbroken for a couple of days. I must admit, to be honest with you, July July second fell through. I'd, um, I'd done um, a four month camp up to that point because obviously I was, uh, when I first started my camp for 12, 13, 14 weeks out, I stepped on the scales, I was 15 stone four. So to get to where I got and the shape I was in and everything, it was it was absolutely heartbroken. But, you know, they say things happen for a reason and I think it's happened for the better. That was my first training camp in 10 years where I was getting used to doing my weights, my bar bag, my body belt, my pads, my sparring and everything like that. So. Uh, I was feeling fantastic, but a little few aches and niggles, as you'd, ex as you'd expect. But for this second camp, I started, you know, I went on holiday at Celery for a month. I had a proper, proper holiday, not like the usual Ricky Hatton holidays, and um, started where I left off. No injuries, no pains, no aches, no nothing, sharper, faster, stronger. And in that time, I've inspired a lot of people, whether, whether it be with the weight or the mental health or, you know, it's been a tough time for people and I think they've looked back and um, looked at what I've done and um, been proud of me and inspired them. So, uh, yeah, I was devastated for a couple of days, but it went for nothing. And you made a lifestyle change, I suppose, have you anyway? Because you, you've got back into brilliant shape again. Is this something that's going to continue in one way, shape or form? I mean, you're not going to be fighting again at a competitive level, but are you going to just keep targets or how are you going to do it? I'm just going to keep on top of what, I've, what, I've, what I'm doing. I mean, I mean, I might put a few pound on from where I'm sat in front of you at the minute, but um, no, I've got, a certain, I've got a new wardrobe and I've got rid of the old wardrobe and I, and I don't want to go back to them old wardrobes. I'm 44 now, do you know what I mean? And although I've, I've breezed this camp, it's been absolutely brilliant. I can't believe how well it's, uh, how well it's gone. But at the end of the day, I can't keep whipping five stone off at 44 years of age now. You know, it's absolutely, it's going to kill me or put me, in the, put me, put me down under. So, uh, no, it's a lifestyle change. And um, listen, life slows down for us all sooner or later. As we get a little bit older, you know, Ricky Hatton's not ready for his pipe and slippers, far from it. But life slows down and I've reached a point in my life where I'm just, you know, I'm enjoying more. I was, you know, when I was going out and partying and drinking, I was sick of feeling rough every day and feeling like shit and everything day. Now I feel great. Um, I'm, I feel positive. I'm, in, I'm inspiring people, and um, still having a little, you know, you know, a little pint here and there and that. But you know, it goes without saying. But no, I think um, I feel Ricky Hatton's been happier now than he has been for years. So I want it to continue. That was fantastic, and for the. The exhibition, you're going to come in around 11 and a half stone yourself and Barrera. You're weighing in. It's all it's all been treated very seriously, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's you know it's at 11 and a half stone, you know. So uh, I mean I, I don't have to make the 10 stone weight as well, which is going to help, you know what I mean? And um, 
But, you know, I used to get in the ring at, you know, 11 stone. When I was in my prime, I used to weigh 10 stone at light well to get in the ring at 11 stone. So you think, you know, it's only like, you know, I'll only be like four or five pound above what I would normally get in the ring at, you know, so it's, it's nothing's really changed. You just haven't got the um, inconvenience of getting right down to that 10 stone, thank God. But, uh, but no, um, no, this is going to be me for um, forever now. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's going to be a great night. Do you know what shape Barrera's in? I haven't. You know, he doesn't post so much, as much as me. But I me, mean, Marco um, is the opposite to me. Actually, you know, he's always, he always, always looked after himself. He's been a model pro, and I know I have. But I've, I've had me, me bad times and I've had me faults through the years. You know, but Marco's, I think, I would say Marco's in shape pretty much 24/7, and all he needs is, is a good few weeks training camp. You know, and uh, I think um, he would have worked hard. But I mean, obviously. With myself, it, it was always made, you know, I always gave myself a mountain to climb. But I think Marco will be in fantastic shape. He's a very proud fighter, a very proud warrior. Uh, he looks after himself 24-7, where Ricky Atten hasn't done in the past. So I think, uh, I think no, I think he's going to come. I think he's going to come prepared here. Yeah. Mm. So the night itself, you've got the Sky Bill first. Obviously, the top of the bills, Natasha Jonas against the Care. But some cracking fights. Obviously, Brad Ray in this very gym has got a great fight. Tyler Denny, an English middleweight title fight. Uh, other, other top fights in the card, Dalton Smith and everything else. So there's that bill first and then everyone hangs on to see the hitman again. But yeah, that's, it's, that's the, the, you know, it's, it's the, the boxer promotion first and then uh, my promotion, you know, we, then, then we come on to finish the uh, to finish the night off, you know. So it's going to be a great night's entertainment and a great night's boxing, to be honest. You know, Natasha Jones is going for another world title, fair play to her, absolutely brilliant stuff she's doing for... For, for, for Liverpool. Brad Ray in his uh, English title fight, first title fight against Tyler Denny. It's a good fight. I think these two are better than English title level, to be honest with you. I think they're worth even more than that, which uh, is a bonus for five fans. But Brad's training has gone absolutely second to none. I'm pretty much palling up with um, Brad side by side in, in training and got the good game plan sorted. And um, that's going to be a great fight. You've got Fraser Clark, big heavyweight on the uh, on the bill. You know, got Smith, who's on the bill. Um, and then um, Ricky Fatton. Well, not Ricky Fatton no more. But no, no. We got, then we got me to finish the show off. I think it's going to be a sensational night, and I, uh, I really can't wait, mate. Yeah, yeah. And what's it going to feel like then when you, you hear Blue Moon again in in your arena, as it was known well, back I'm in the a, day? I, I'm, you know, people may see me as a toughie, but I'm a bit, of, I'm a bit of a fucking crier, um, to be honest with you. So we am. Um, it would take a lot, but I, mean, I always used to get emotional when I feel the crowd, and because it's not been ten years, and because of what I've been through in that time space it will be very very emotional for me uh, my mum and dad will be at ringside for the first time in you know 18 years well it's, a, it's it i suppose no, costa no, costa zoo was the last arena fight before the Sinchenko yeah, one, wasn't you it you know so it, it will be uh, very emotional I've, you know i've gone through a lot in my life great times bad times but you know the the good times are back and to be honest you know ricky atten's never been Never been happier there. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to turn the clock back and go to Vegas and lift world titles, but Ricky Hatton in himself mentally has never been better than he is at this minute. And um, I'm just looking forward to put a good show on like uh, like I always I always did. Yeah, you mentioned Fraser Clark there before. I didn't realise anyone liked Only Fools and Horses more than you. I yeah. saw that little clip of you two in, in, yeah, in your it, van. It was funny that I like Fraser. He's a good lad. He's done a lot of work. You know, when Campbell's gone to London, he's took Campbell under his wing and they've worked together well and and, and stuff like that. I really like him and um, he's got the pedigree, Fraser. Got the pedigree, you know what I mean? He's a down-to-earth, nice lad, working class, you know, type guy. He went to the, uh, went, you know, great amateur, massive amateur success. He's got all the pedigree there and talking to him and seeing him, he seems he's got the heart, desire, the will and, the, you know, the, the intelligence. He's a good talker. And, um, yeah, it'd be nice for the Manchester fans and, and for all the fans on, on, on Sky Sports to be able to see... Uh, you know, the next heavyweight coming through because we've, we've got the best, haven't we, in this country. We have done for the last few years now and it's lovely to see the conveyor belt coming through of the, 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 the fighters that are going to step into their space. Yeah, you just mentioned Campbell there, though, of course. You've, you've just seen him in action at the weekend and he's getting better, isn't he? I mean, you can see the improvements with every fight. You must have been delighted to see that. Absolutely, you know what I mean? He, uh, he was he, The best thing about Campbell was he was, he was going forward, solid defence, um, 
and his punch placement. Normally, you know, he, he'd throw that many punches. I think he's always started off great in his fights, but he's not been able to maintain it because of that hat and red mist that sometimes, you know, sets in, you know, so I mean, it, 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 but he knows, we've been telling him for the last couple of fights and, you know, and I said to him, I said, listen, you know, you're starting off well, you're making mistakes, but you keep making these same mistakes. We keep telling you, you keep doing it. We want it put him right this fight. And he did. And um, peach of a, you know, a left up to the body. And it was his punch placement. He didn't get close to his opponent and then just go whack, 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 like he previously does. He got close to his opponent, sit, 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 whack. And that's what we, me and Matthew want, you know, more from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did those body shots come from, eh? I don't know, yeah. I think I, I think he hit him with one of them when he was 15. Don't tell his mum, Claire, but uh, I think that's where he might have got it from. Pat Barrett did it to me when I was 15, so I did it to Campbell. And I tell you what, it did me good, and it didn't do uh, Campbell good the other night. didn't do Campbell bad the other night. No, no, it was a great bill, and obviously Pat was there with Zelfra. It didn't happen for Zelfra, which was a real shame, but it, it was a brilliant bill for Campbell to be a part of. And I tell you what, I, I'm... I think you'll, you'll agree with this. If you ever want to show him a fighter to have a look at and try and take a few lessons off, Bivol, my God, that was some masterclass, wasn't it? Yeah, Bivol, you know what I mean? He's, you know, I think everybody, you know, his, his, his fight against um, Canelo, everyone went, wow, what a great performance, how mature, you know what I mean? He did, he counteracted everything Canelo did and for someone as good and versatile as Canelo, but everyone said, well, maybe we was too big, maybe Styles made fights, he just had the style to beat Canelo, no. No, he was great again. I think he's going to be one of the, I think he's one of the best pound for pound. Certainly is deserves to be the best one of the best pound for pound already. I think he'll probably even get better, and it's it's, it's brilliant to watch. And and back to to Zelfa, you know what I mean? He showed so much um, heart. Prove that he's worthy of being at world title level. You know, fantastic boxing ability. And then I. Um, the wheels came off a little bit, he dug in, he showed tremendous heart, which you've got to prove at world title level. So he's proved his ability, he's proved his heart. He just went a little bit, you know, tits up as we as, as we say. But I think he, he had a perforated eardrum, which affects all your, you know, your equilibrium, doesn't it? And all your movement and your balance and all, it affects all, um, I think that's equilibrium, that's right, isn't it? Well, go on with it. But no, uh, but you know what I mean, it affects you. You know what I mean? And that might be the reason why he fails to start, but it doesn't need me to tell Zelfra. Pat will, Pat will know as well. He's proved he's got the ability. A little bit of a perforated, perforated eardrum in between, which wouldn't have helped, but he's dug in and dug in and dug in. He'll be back. And I remember um, a certain Andy Crawler who had a few speed bumps along the way, but he stayed at it, stayed at it. Where did he end up? So uh, you keep your chin up, Zelf. Well, we can't be digging Crawler up. He, he likes these <laughs> He likes these compliments too, far too much, Rick. And, but, uh, now, well, there was, a, there was a, another... Manchester, if you like, anyway, world champion. We, we can claim Chantal Cameron because your old mate Jamie. Yeah, and fantastic. Was a over night, Jamie. Obviously. Text yeah. Jamie, she won fantastic. So we have a uni unified champion. And to come from Manchester as well. Wow, absolutely, absolutely sensational. Absolutely sensational. And uh, lots of big fights now on the on the line for her. Do you know what I mean? She's got all the belts. Great future ahead of herself. And I was made up for Jamie and Nigel. We've got a great stable there now. All the lads are coming through brilliant. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Another one for Manchester, yeah. Yeah, and just talking of Manchester, because we, we, we can never let you go without talking about City, because it's so close to your heart, obviously, and uh, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Just a bit ahead of the, the, the winter break, you'll enjoy the World Cup as well when you get your thing out of the way, but City, you must be delighted going there these days, are you? Yeah, I mean, it's that Champions League we want, don't we? I mean, we want the league, but well, I mean, it's the Champions League we want, and I've been saying I think we're going to do it for the last two or three years now, and we haven't done so. Dare I say it? Dare I say it again, oh, it's, this is our year. But I think with the players we've added, Haaland in particular, I feel more confident this year than any, but I'm not going to say it because he'll probably go bangers. But, uh, but no, uh, and this weekend, 2-1 against Fulham with an injury time winner. You know what I mean? United, when they were winning all their titles years ago, they ever they, they always pulled it back at the, at the death, and that's what good teams do. They used to say United was stuffy. They wouldn't. They played to the death. They played to the final whistle. A few years ago, City would play great and lose games. Now, you know, we're having a bit of a struggle. We're getting them in injury time now, so it's like ticking all the boxes. And what the way Pep's got us playing, the, you know, they add to the squad with Haaland. Grealish is coming good now. Um, fairly optimistic, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Come on with that Champions League, boys, yeah. And just a, a weird left of, left field kind of thought. 
Have you ever been approached about the jungle and all that kind of business? Because, again, just that's back now and it, it, it just seems to be getting bigger now. Or, you must have had calls for that kind of stuff in the past. A bit. Uh, I did do. I got asked a couple of times years ago and I wasn't really bothered because I was, I was cracking on with my boxing. And then after my boxing, there was... Um, I don't want to keep boring people about it, but there was a period there where my head fell off, you know, and, and everything like that. But, um, no, I, and the, the jungle is the one that I always... Uh, I always, I always watch because I think it's in doing so you're achieving something. You know what I mean? It's not a load of bollocks like like some of them. You know, it, it's, it's like you're achieving something. You know, you're conquering your fears, going in the jungle, being away from your loved ones. You know, like it, it's like a, a training camp in the bush. <laughs> do you know, do you know what I mean? So uh, I, I don't know. You know, my my life has moved on from the boxing and the bad times, and I'm in a nice, good, happy place. If the phone call come, I'd, I'd, I'd look at it. But I mean. Um, I mean, first time I've been asked that question, <laughs> Dom, actually, to be honest. It's something traditionally I don't normally do because I'm not really, you know... I could see you do that one. Because, yeah, yeah. as you say, I mean, obviously, Amir Khan did really well in it, didn't he? David Hayes been in it. And, you know, there's this... Yeah, a, I mean, Amir Nick in the... Was yeah, it yeah. the sausages? Was there something? Well, I, could, I, I could definitely see you in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can have a look at it, can't we? So. <laughs> In the meantime, anyway, you've got your own show on Saturday night and that's uh, that's back to what you, you really are looking forward to doing again, making that ring walk, having yeah, your fans there, on having a, them put, sing your name, all that business again. Yeah, it's put, going to be special. Well, with the crowd, you know what I mean? Putting on a show for the for the crowd. As I mentioned, um, I think what I've done is inspired a few people, bearing in mind my age, the shape and what I've come through to do what I've done, so that's another plus. Sharing the ring with me, mate, Marco and Tony Oberera. We all know how good Marco was. Um, was I'm going to get the chance first and to share the ring and find out just how good he was. So that's a dream in, it, in its, uh, you know, in, it, in itself. And there in front of my Manchester fans, with my family and my friends, and mum and dad at ringside, and you know, it's um, it's going to be an emotional night, but it's going to be a belter. Well, Brad, massive night ahead. Bit of a breakout fight for you, really. You get beyond Tyler Denner, you get the first major belt of your career. That's going to be huge. It's a good time of year to be doing this as well, just, just shy of Christmas. But what, what's your feelings going into this one now? How are you? Again, everyone I'm always going to ask you about weight and this, that, and the other. So, how are you fixed? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Feeling great. Um, things couldn't have gone any better, really. Camp's gone perfect. And, you know, my weight's good. And the hard work's done now. The hard work's done now. I know uh, I've got a tough fight ahead of me. It's a tough test. Tyler Denny is a good seasoned fighter. Been in there at a good level. You know, beat good, good fighters, English champion, and no doubt it's me, it's me toughest fight to date, but it's a fight that I'm confident I'm gonna come through. And like you say, you know, when I get the win on Saturday night, that'll cement me now in the kind of domestic middle middleweight division as, you know, someone who's, you know, it means business, it means business. And I, I think my last few fights, you know, I've kind of just been short of that stage, but, you know, I win on Saturday, it means, and you know, I'm ready to get in the mix. I think the last time we had you on the show was when you were on the undercard of the car, uh, the, you were in the Trafford Centre, weren't we? And at that point, you weren't in too much of a hurry. You were quite rightly take, thinking about titles down the line and everything else. So this would come a little bit quicker than you expected, maybe. Is that the way you're thinking? In a way, you know, I'm, I'm still only young. I'm still 24. But me and Blaine have, have always said kind of, when I feel ready, I'm ready to take that step up and to go for titles. And it doesn't matter when it is, it doesn't matter who's got the title. You know, I feel like I'm good enough now to fight for the English title, so it, it doesn't matter, I'm ready. And, um, you know, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And on Saturday night, I'm going to find out if I'm good enough. I know you've been boxing all your life anyway, and coaching all your life as well, which I think is really interesting because it gives you a different eye, doesn't it, when you're, you're training yourself. And I, I always think it's brilliant for a boxer to coach as well. Something you've always done, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. It, it, just makes you kind of look at things from a different different point of view, a different perspective. And Blaine always says that I find it a lot easier, you know, explaining stuff to me because I've got that kind of side of it. Um, for any any young boxers, you know, amateur or whatever, who, who are maybe interested in getting the coaching badges or just giving out the coaches a, a lift in the corner or junior classes or whatever, like honestly, couldn't recommend it enough. Not just. For the, for the coaching side of it, but to also enhance, you know, you as a boxer. So Tyler Denny, we've seen him beat Derek Asase. That was a bit of a shock, but he's shown what he can do. I know you would have looked at him, you know all about him, but what are you expecting on Saturday night from him? 
Yeah, I'm expecting a tough fight. I'm expecting, you know, he comes to win every fight. He, he, he's not scared. He'll get in there with anyone. You know, I think his last, last four opponents have all been undefeated. He's done the 10 rounds, multiple occasions. So I've never been there before, never gone past the eight. So um, it's something new for me, but you know, I, I've put the work in the gym. I, I know this is a tough fight, so I've put the work in the gym and I'm confident that, you know, the work that we've done in it, in the, in the gym, you know, he's going to come good on Saturday. So is it British title then next year? That's in the sights now? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see one step at a time. But that's been, the British title has been my goal since, well, I was going to say since turning professional then, but since I was a little kid. For me, that, that belt is is the one, it's the most prestigious title out there, you know, and um, that's always been my goal since turning pro is top of the list. And, um, you know, whether it comes at some point next year, whether it takes a little bit longer, you know, we'll see how, how we're progressing and how our fights go in between. But like I say, when I Saturday night, it gets me in that mix, you know, and um, the division is stacked domestically. So many good lads, so many good fights to be made. And, you know, I feel like I'm at that stage now. I feel like I'm ready for these fights and, you know, plan on showing that on Saturday. There's plenty of experience to kind of lean on in here as well. Obviously, the hitman himself, who's got his exhibition at the weekend, and Blaine's a top coach as well, knows exactly what's going on, doesn't he? And he have you learned so much about this kind of fight week from, from Blaine, from Ricky? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's good because obviously Rick's been there, been there, done it. Blaine obviously assisted Rick in camps, big title fights and stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like whereas if it was just me and Blaine out on our own, you know, you're in uncharted territory, I'd still, I'd still be confident we'd get the job done. But, you know, I know that they've been there and done it. And just little things like Rick, the other day me and Rick were speaking about when he boxed for his first title and I think he boxed for a central area title somewhere. And, you know, he was just saying, you think, you know, you might freeze. It's your biggest fight today. You know, you're on TV and stuff. And he said, but the type of fight is like, I wasn't the type of fight you are. You'll just rise to the occasion. You know, and you hear it for him. You think, yeah, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do that, that's going to be me. Yeah, it's interesting because looking at the fight posters around this gym as well, looking at some of the names on the undercards of Ricky's fights, some of the big Manchester names, you know, that are now gone. You know, obviously after Ricky came world champions like Quig and Crawler, again, they've gone now. I mean, Zelfo did really well in his world title fight the other night. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen for him. Does Manchester need a big star at the minute? And is that the way you're thinking that you can step into those shoes. Yeah, 100%, 100%, you know, that's always been a goal of mine to, these are the fighters I grew up watching, you know, Ricky, Quig, Crawler, going to the arena, watching them pack it out. And, you know, that's always been a goal of mine to kind of get that support and get that backing from the city that it's given to so many before of them. Um, you know, so for me, I, I think if, it, if I can, like I say, the, the there's some top fighters in Manchester at the moment, some top fighters, but there's not that, that one person who's fighting at the arena consistently and, you know, we're selling the place out, being in fun, entertaining fights there. And, you know, I've said, I've said it before, but I don't see why it can't be me. I don't see why that can't be me. You know, I'm working hard, I'm putting in the work and, you know, on fight night, um, I'm putting on a show. I'm putting on a show, you know, no matter what, I'm being in fun, entertaining fights and that's what people want to see. So, you know, we'll see how we go. And you, you do it, you're doing tickets already, I know that, but obviously you're a City fan from Stretford, we won't go there, but you are, you've got, you know, you've got lots of support from City fans, and I know with your Scottish connections as well, bit of a Rangers man. I so am, I am. You've got a few coming down probably from north of the border as well, have you? Yeah, we've got them coming from all over, don't worry. Um, but yeah, you know, I've got a great following now, people are really getting behind me, and you know, it's great to see. Like I say, a lot of blues, but majority of my mates are all reds anyway, so. I think they just they just kind of ignore that side of it. But um, listen, he had plenty of red support in him, didn't he, Ricky? Yeah, he never you, made any difference. You've seen yeah. it before, you know. All the United fans used to come out for Rick. The City fans used to come out for Crawler. And at the end of the day, you know, when those manks get together, you know, it, it's uh, we're a real force. So hopefully on Saturday night we'll be making some noise. And finally, because obviously you're a middleweight, but you're a big lad. Is the weight still no issue for you? Yeah, still doing the weight comfortable. Still doing the weight comfortable. You know, I, I know I'm big at the weight, and I know that eventually one day, I think the time will come where you know I've got to step up. I've got to move up. The older I get, I've got a great team at the moment who, who, you know, help me make the weight comfortably and safely, and where I can perform at the best of my ability. Um, obviously, me and Blaine have got my nutritionist Pete Bell as well, who 
you know, I don't think with, without him, uh, with him, without him now, sorry, I'd be doing the weight. But, you know, now I seem to be doing it easier than ever. Um, so yeah, you know, I've got I've got time left at middleweight. I've got titles in me at middleweight and, you know, then in a couple of years, we'll see where we go from there. You're obviously doing it well. On the eve of the big fight, you're still smiling. There's no crankiness, so something's going on. I'm always well. smiling, I'm always smiling. So Brad Ray, of course, he's got that great fight with Tyler Denny, a big step up for him, but such a good lad, always smiling, great. as he says, and uh, always, always enjoying life in that gym. I, I go way back with Brad, like I say, I remember him as a, a chubby 12-year-old yeah. boxing out the St. John's ABC with his father, um, and I've always hoped that he would go on to be on these kind of stages, and he's certainly not let us down, and yeah. I believe there's a lot more to go on the Brad Ray story, um, hopefully goes right to the top, and he's got a great chance, but... As mentioned, he's got a good fight on Saturday. Very mm. capable opponent in Tyler Denny. The first real, you know, I don't want to say acid test, but of his career. Mm. Um, but yeah, great to see Brad out. And mm. it must be magical for him, you know, training alongside one of his heroes in Ricky Atten. So mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see Brad getting the platform and the kind of exposure that he deserves. And listening to Ricky there as well, of course, he's, you know, in great shape, brilliant shape. Yes. He he's really back in form if you like as well you can it see is. physically and mentally back in form really really looking forward to this it's quite emotional about the whole thing it is and I, I can understand yeah. why and I imagine when he's waiting to make that ring walk to uh, the dreaded blue moon that <laughs> is it's going to be a, a very special moment yeah. for an emotional moment it's going to bring all kind of memories yeah, yeah. you know about, but there'll be butterflies there I'm sure and I was speaking to his son Campbell who's coming off um, a great win at mm. the weekend a, a body shot his dad would be proud of yeah. and he said he, um, he said his dad just seems in such a better place and yeah. that's what I believe for the knockers you know who might say well it's dangerous and this and that they've, they've passed all the checks obviously it's not with the British Boxing Board of Control but that have been put in place and they've just you know just seemed in such a better place and hopefully it'll inspire many others who have been suffering yeah, of course, it's been great form all week. And it is fight week, which means there's various media events going on. As I mentioned before, we are at the Love Factory. So there's been the press conference. And of course, we've been catching up with absolutely everyone. Ant. And also, of course, there's the Ricky Hatton exhibition as well. So this is your Manchester fight week. Well, Dalton, you've had a look at the man you're going to share the ring with. You mean your career today, perfect. You've got the British title. Everyone wants that Lonsdale belt. This is going to be some test, though. Is that the way you've approached this? Yeah, you know, I'm at a stage in my career now where there's no easy fights. Um, you know, and this is the time for me to prove that I'm on. I'm in with the big boys. Um, you know, Case is a great fighter. He's, you know, got himself into the man mandatory position. Um, you know, for being able to fight and, and and prove to people he's, you know, he's at that level. So, you know, I'm expecting a good Casey Benjamin on Saturday, but an even better Dalton Smith. And you deserve a bit of praise for this as well, because I think when you get a British title, there are opportunities to go down other routes for belts and international titles. Or you've defended against a lad with a record like him, so it's a serious, serious fight when you could have had an easier fight. But are you trying to get people's attention at this stage, or what's the thinking behind that? No, it's, it's just I have won the British, and Casey was the mandatory. And that's how it goes. That's, I'm not going to avoid anybody, but anybody because I'm a fighter at the end of the day. Um, you know, I'm a better fighter than Casey, so, you know, it's boxing. You know, boxing's, people say, oh, it's a dangerous fight. Boxing's dangerous, and that's how it goes. And, you know, and there's no easy fights for me in my career now. You know, every step up, you know, the fights are going to get harder. And, you know, that's why you'll see the, see more come out of Dalton Smith's armour. Dalton, a lot of people will say that you're a great prospect for a world title. You've currently got the British title. There's a nice, quick first defence here come through on Saturday. Is it tempting to get the three defences to have one for keeps? Of course, and you know as a fighter how much it, them British titles mean, so, you know, if I could get it to keeps outright, that's what I want, but, you know, I just listen to my team, see what they say is best for business. Don, it's been an amazing last few months for you, obviously. The Sheffield night was a special night, like an unbelievable crowd in there for you. You're now at the AO Arena on another huge platform. It's been some 2022 for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a big year for me, and especially in Sheffield. That was obviously like my homecoming after you know many years. Um, you know, to, so to go out in fashion and end the fight, how I did. You know, it was their memories forever. But you know, like you say, that's in the past. We move on. You know, their memories, and we're here to create more. So, and I always like to give your dad a shout out because I know what a great coach he is. But who's got the tougher weekend? 
Your dad in a world title fight and his son in a British title fight, back to back days, are you in a British title think, fight with Casey I think, Benjamin? I think mentally my dad, but physically <laughs> we've got it harder, haven't we? <laughs> Just a bit. No, it'll be some, uh, some weekend for the gym. I think now, Dalton, with this, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about, you know, what's next for Dalton. So if you mention the British title, Roughly how far away are you just leave it to the team? The next two years, do you want to be headlined in that Sheffield Arena off in world title fights? Yeah, even better, I want to be headlined in Hillsborough Stadium, so... Oof. But, you know, they're, they're, they're goals in the, in, in the future. Um, and, you know, you can't overlook anything because to get to them, you know, them big goals, you've got to do these cool. these little goals now. And Well, not little goals, but you just can't take your eye off the ball because everything I'm doing now is for, is for in the future. Well, Fraser, you've done the presser, that's out of the way now. Just counting down the hours till you get in. Is it fair to say, though, Sokolowski is the, the biggest test so far by, by some distance? Well, Bracamonte, I don't think he was a bad name, you know. I've, I've got a bit of stick for it, but, you know, I look but at... He it, gave Dave Allen a yeah, hell, didn't well, he? when I seen who he's been in with. Yeah. So, you know, Sokolowski, probably, probably a little, i say a little bit better and tested people a little bit more, but th this is what I relish, you know, like... Obviously, there's a time and a place, and I don't want to be begrudged for you know the first couple of pro fights it's different everyone everyone, everyone has you know an easy touch as such yeah. doesn't they do you know what I mean um, because I come from the Olympics it's a massive problem all of a sudden but it's I'm like no one else different game I told everyone that I need to learn the professional game and that's what I've been doing Frey you said you're in no rush to learn that of despite the you know decorated amateur background do you still believe a lot of your main learning is done in the sparring in the camps 100% in the gym and uh this camp has been a little bit different. Like, we've got a gym for the people. Um, there's myself, uh, Richard Riappour and Kieran Malloy all training for different dates. Um, I've had to be that that professional, and I've had to say to uh, my coach, we struggle for sparring, my heavyweight. Yes. I've had to say to him, I said, look, mate, uh, I've, got, I've got some sparring down in, in, in London, some in Essex. Do you mind if I go? He's gone, look, you, you can go down there, but you've got to understand that I've got other people in camp. I said, yeah. look, I'm a big boy. Let, let me take myself down yeah. there, put myself in other people's backyards. It's a bit yes. uncomfortable. Great experiences, and, and, and that's where I'm getting a lot of my learning at the minute. Now, brilliant. Like you say, you're being kept active. I know you don't want to look past Saturday night. Early in the new year, we see Fraser back out again. Def definitely, you know, I think Christmas has always been a time where Fraser yeah. sort of got right, right off the rails, but <laughs> it's different now with professionals, you know, so don't get me wrong, I, I need a bit of downtime. It's been a busy year. I'd enjoy myself, but I want to hit the ground running in January and be ready to fight again probably end of February. <laughs> Summary, we're here just two days out yeah. before the world title. The Ring Magazine belt on the line against Natasha Jonas. How are you feeling now? You've got the pressure out of the <laughs> way. Just to weigh in tomorrow yeah. and then game time. I mean, I feel great. Uh, you know, press conference is part of the game. It's part of the what brings us to the fight. So having to live every step of the way, every part of the road, uh, to me, is great because we know when the press conference is on, it means we're two days from the fight. So I'm happy, I'm excited, and I'm looking forward for this fight. Really, you mentioned at the top table then how you always had this dream to become a professional athlete and make yeah. a living out of that. You said some nice words about Natasha, what she's done for women's boxing. For you, we've recently we saw Clarissa Shields, Savannah yep. Marshall, you sure shared the ring with Clarissa Shields. How happy have you been as a female athlete seeing this side of the sport grow the way it has? Uh, I mean, it's crazy, and especially here in Manchester, in the, U in the UK, because um, in, in uh, North America, Canada, USA, we're starting yeah. to have a place. We're starting, my promoter, Groupe Yvonne Michel, did a great job putting me the headliner, giving me some big finals. but especially when we go with Boxer, when we go with big uh, company like that to see what we're able to put through and to see how the, the fans respond to this because the promoter can put on the show, but if the fans doesn't come, we don't have any, uh, any ambience and everything. So uh, the, the response for the people from the fans, people are there to cheer, people are willing to see women boxing and that's amazing for me, but for all the little girls yeah. that are growing up. Marie, I know you would never look past Natasha Jonas, but if you're to be victorious on Saturday night, what would interest you the most? Would it be, one, the rematch with Clarissa Shields if she come back down, or would it be to try and unify all the belts with Terry Harper? You know what? Uh, my answer is going to be the same because... I'm really honest when I say I don't like look past through. Of course. Um, to me, what's important is the 12th. My uh, 
my past two months are been focused on the 12th. Uh, we haven't thought about anything else, and I know we're going to have plenty of time to think about what's going to be next. Uh, but for now, the only thing that matters is my fight Saturday against Natasha. Well, Ben, another Manchester show. It's a good one. You look at the top three fights in this as well, and they, they do catch the eye again. All the home fighters, if you like, in real fights. Yeah, I mean, a few of them took a bit of convincing, as they always do, but Brad Ray is in a tough fight. I think that one in particular could be fire of the night. Tyler Denny is a serious guy. I've watched his last two fights. have been on our shows. River Wilson, Ben, those battles were incredible. Brad Ray is going to have to come through a very, very tough guy, determined not to lose on Saturday night. And uh, for the English title, which is a title that he wanted, he's doing it in front of his home crowd. I think this could be a breakout night for Brad Ray. We, we hear a lot about him, don't we, in Manchester. He's a middleweight, he's coming through. He, I mean, fantastic hard work, uh, works with Ricky Hatton as well. This is his night on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Ricky. It's, a, it's an interesting kind of night, isn't it? And with the boxer event, Ricky doing his thing afterwards. But the main event with Natasha again and, and women's boxing, you know, a bit of pressure on Natasha now. Chantel did the business last yeah, week. Yeah. It's been an incredible year for women's UK fighting. So, again, I'm, you know, Anthony knows Natasha very, very well, obviously. But talking to Marie, she's... She's here, not, she's not messing about. She's confident, isn't she? She's ready, she knows her size difference. She knows that this is a fight that should, on paper, be made for her. She's fighting another Southpaw who's a lot smaller than her. She'll be feeling very confident. Ben, do you know, going back to London at the O2 not long back, the boxer team put on an amazing night, headlined yeah. by Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall. Clarissa Shields has since said she won't mind coming back over here. Do you think there's a realistic chance of if Tasha Jonas comes through on Saturday night, we see Clarissa back over here dropping down a weight? I think Tasha has to win on Saturday. Absolutely. I think after that, she said three names to me, Katie Taylor, Jessica McCaskill and Clarissa Shields. All different weight divisions, but that's where she's at. She just wants the big names, the big fights. If she comes through Saturday, I can see obviously Clarissa will fight in the UK. She wants to be over here and she wants the names. And Tasha Jonas is now one of the biggest names in women's boxing. She's headlining her own bills. She's going to be, hopefully, she comes through three-time three, three time world champion. So it's a, it's a big night for her. You're going back to Brad Ray there. You say, you see, Brad, we all know how good he can be. It's good for boxer teams to always be at the arena when they're there. Yeah. Do you envision Brad in the next year to headline in that arena becoming a regular outing? I hope so. I mean, there's a long way to go. Of course. You've got Clark Smith as well, who's starting talent. out. He's another talent from Manchester with Joe. And you've seen it before, I mean, with yourself. I remember there was Quig, there was you. Obviously, Ricky just retired, but we always had a lot going on. And you do look around, Jack Cattrall, obviously yes. coming through as well. Hopefully he can be headlining in the arena soon. But. You do always want them. You always need it for the city. And I think Brad can be one of them. And yeah, I hope that this is a good night for it because Ricky Hatton fans are going to be in there. It's going to be incredible atmosphere and arena. For him to box in front of that, that's the fans he wants to win. And yeah, if he could come through on Saturday, it's a massive moment. Away from this amazing show at the arena, I'm not sure how much you can say. Are the rumors true that there is a possibility of seeing Chris Eubank Jr. Liam Smith on a boxer card in the new year? Yeah, I think Look, we tried to make it for this year for whatever reason. There just wasn't enough time. But look, Chris wants the biggest fights. Liam Smith's probably the biggest domestic fight out there for him. I know Liam wants that fight as well. I expect it to happen. And yeah, hopefully we can announce that maybe next week. And finally, Ben, finally, we've got a busy year to the end of the year. We just give us a quick yeah. run through the end of the year. I know it's Ali Pali in a Ali few weeks. Ali Pali, and then I think Chris Billion Smith's going to headline in Bournemouth. Back again. to Bournemouth which was unbelievable last time. The atmosphere was incredible. And Any other boxer tournaments? Uh, no tournaments. I think we hoped, as I say, we hoped that the box office day was going to land this year. It's now looking like it'll be January. Obviously, we need to announce Taylor Capital yeah. in the next couple of weeks as well. Wow. So it's a very, very busy time. And I think we, we've, we put on the most shows in Britain, the most televised shows in Britain. And it's uh, every couple of weeks till the end of the year. And then we'll be starting again in January. Very busy. <laughs> You've got a, a fight, though, a proper fight to take care of before you can talk about Clarissa. And I know, obviously, it's the old cliche, but you can't look beyond the care, can you? I mean, she's a, a, very, a very talented fighter. You've got some common foes on, on, on the record. She, she's boxed Namus and I think a couple of others possibly as well. I mean, what does she bring? She's Southpaw as well, isn't she? Yeah, she's Southpaw, so that's different for me. Um, I would be quite fortunate with uh, Namus and Bergolt that they, you know, came 
well in, under the 154 limit. Mm. I think one was 149 and the other one was 148. So that probably played into my hands because I'm a, you know, only coming in 148 to myself. Um, I think when the care gets in, she'll be 160 plus. So that's a big difference. Um, so I'm going to have to handle that. I'm going to have to box smart. She's good on her feet. She's good with her hands. But overall, like, I just think I'm better. So um, I've got to go out and prove that. And, and, and not only build on the big Alton Namas victories, but show everything that I do in the gym and, 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 and show that I've improved that little 1% that you're trying to improve every time. This new division, I mean, do you feel very settled in it now? I say new, you've had a couple of fights, obviously, at, at this weight, but yeah. <laughs> but does it feel now, are you, are you happy with everything in terms of at the weight now? Yeah, I could, like I say, I'm, I'm only weighing in 140. Yeah, so you're coming so in light anyway. I'm but... coming in light, I could go down. Um, yeah. There's no chance of me going up to, to 160. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, but I feel comfortable, I think. You know, you realise sometimes how much, you know, weight making sometimes takes out of you when, when you do these heavier weights. I've managed to keep me power, keep me speed and keep me um, footwork as well. So, yeah, I've still managed to keep all my assets, you know, and working on others. Mm. But, you know, now you're, you're in with bigger, stronger girls. You've, 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 you know, you don't want to take too many shots either. So you've got to box smart and, you know, move your head a bit more. Well, she's had great southpaw sparring. Clark Smith was on the bill, southpaw. Callum Thompson, southpaw. And we brought some good girls in as well, southpaw. So, uh, yeah, she's had a, a diet of southpaw for the last few weeks. And, um, yeah, I've been working on things. I've got to look at Marie as well. Marie can box on the back foot. Marie can also box on the front foot. Um, she's got good feet. She's got good hands, and she's very game. She comes from a, a karate background. I think it's five black belts or whatever. So uh, she's game. She can take a shot, and I think she'll be looking to use her size and her strength in the fight to sort of like tie Natasha down the straight. But it's a uh, yeah, it's a tough fight. A lot of pressure on Natasha, isn't there? I mean, again, because the women's fights have been so good. And, you know, obviously GB fight is right up there. I know Savannah came short a little bit against Carissa, but pressure on Natasha being that, that pioneer that she's always been and, and you know, spearheading the, the charge again, isn't she? Yeah, no, exactly. They said it was the beginning of the year and the car and broke Bill Natasha. So, like, lit the torch paper for the women's boxing this year. It was already up there, but it got the momentum going, which seen Savannah and Carissa's fight. We've had some great Katie Taylor fought the other week. Chantel Cameron had a great win at the weekend. Yeah. And so, like, Natasha, sort of, like, kicked that off, winning the world title, and everyone was pleased for her. Mm -hmm. Everyone was saying, oh, she just, she, she just missed out of Kate, beat Terry, but didn't get the decision. But now she's a world champion, and to have that in front of 20,000 was brilliant. Now she's gone to Liverpool in front of old fans, won another world title, and um, she's here now for another world title and the ring belt. And um, for a, a lady, 38 years young, she's still hungry um, for more success. Well, there you go, all the action from Fight Week in Manchester, of course. Ricky with the exhibition with Marco Antonio Barrera. The main event, though, just want to get your thoughts yeah. on this because we've spoken to Natasha, we've spoken to Decare as well. She's come over here, you know, as a champion. Let's not yes. forget the IBF belt is hers. She's got the one blip against Clarissa Shields. She wants to avenge that. And she's, no she's come here to, to get rid of Natasha. Make no mistake. Uh, you can see that. And you, you've had a look at Anne physically as well. How do you, how do you weigh up the fight she's, now? She's very confident. She looks in great shape. She's uh, certainly the bigger woman. I yeah. think the eye she had on just that, you know, the head to head before, that was a bit deceiving. But no, there's no denying she's certainly the bigger woman in there. But I think Natasha's had that throughout her campaign at this um, in this yeah. division. But no, she's very confident. I think it's going to make for a great fight. I, um, but I believe this good runner, Tasha Jonas, is going to continue. And uh, she picks up the Ring Magazine belt on, um, on Saturday night. But I think, you know, I really do think we're in for a great fight, just like last time with her. I know you've been working with her in camp, Natasha. She's been working with Southpaws. It's the first time as a pro she'll have a Southpaw opponent. But as a seasoned amateur, she's used to just adapting anyway, isn't she? Yeah, of course she is. And, uh, you know, Joe's brought fantastic sparring mm. in for her, you know, to replicate the style of the care. So it'll be it'll be a very good fight, but it's, you don't want to look past this. And I know no girl, none of them are looking mm. past it, but there's some huge fights. Which leads winner. us on, before we get to those huge fights, Anthony, the bet, what's it going to be this the week? The bet, oh, wow. It's mm. a tricky one, okay. So I started with early in the night, looking through yep. the betting before, Sonny Edwards points. Then in the next fight, it's yep. such it's so. such a tough one to call. And I, the wrong because I do like Marcel, but I think Thomas Osombo just to win. Yep. Then I think the night after, 
we see um, continuing a great weekend for the Steel City team, which I think um, Dalton Smith stoppage, Dalton Smith stoppage, and a Natasha Jonas win, just win. Okay. So that's I feel like I've missed some out. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, there's the four. So that's the weekend taken care of. And as you mentioned, yes. Sonny Edwards, who, of course, has got that, that fight in Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, and again, against Al Alvarado. Tough fight. Tough, tough fight. I just believe with Sonny, he's got, he's got skills to burn. And yeah. um, I just believe he's a very, very hard fight to figure out. Never show our confidence. But I just think, listen, I think he'll be asked a few questions. Good fighter, good mm. challenger. But um, he comes through on points. And then you say Natasha Jonas, you think it's going to be her night as well. Um, yep. Yeah. Then you can just sit back and enjoy Tasha the on, exhibition. Yes. After Natasha, as far as you're concerned, does the business and marches on. I do believe that. I'm going to say Tasha points as well. So, yeah, Tasha points, Sunny points, Dalton inside the distance and Tom Samba just to win. And I, and I believe you're, you're under some pressure from uh, the Sky team to take them all out on the beer. So where's it going to be, Anne? Oh, wow. It's, well, I don't know what I don't know what the Love fa Factory is going to be saying on a Saturday night. It's a perfect place for a rave. So who knows? But uh, as long as I meet Ricky's... Uh, Shirt day on the Sunday, the famous. Uh, I think you're allowed to say it's the shit shirt party shit shirt that he does Sunday. after every fight in Hattersley. As long as I make that, on. I'll be okay. He says though that you'll have to wear your usual clubber. Well, I, I'll go if Anthony Crawler doesn't, <laughs> because he can wear some shite him. <laughs> yeah, I get that quite a bit. Yeah, but anyway, Crawler's not shit that's shirt Sunday. Said, that's what he's right, saying. I'll be having words. And next week, Anthony, we've got a few surprises for you. It's going to okay. be a little bit of an Anthony Crawler special with some oh. other stuff thrown in as well. So that's all you know for now. That's all you need to know for now. So we can look forward to that wow. next week. So in the meantime, thanks very much indeed for watching that's the Lightweight it. Boxing Show.